What's going on everybody? We are back for part two of this crazy little nano predator tank build. We are gonna be going out and picking up a very specific type of fish. This is a fish that I have not personally kept in a tank ever in my entire life. Whoa! Hey, you need to calm down. I'm telling you now, I've had about enough of your lip. Good Lord, Arowana Grande just tried to jump out of the indoor pond and bite me on the back. I don't know what's going on with her, but listen, maybe she wants to eat. But anyway, so today's video is going to be crazy because I am picking up these fish that I've actually never kept before and I'm super excited about them and I think they're a really cool addition to the fish room. So make sure that you are subscribed and make sure that you turn on that notification bell and make sure you like this video because we all know it's going to be a banger, right? Yes, we do. All right, with all that, I'll stop talking. Let's get into this video. So I wanted to come back and kind of show you the tank now that it is cleared up. This thing is actually quite cool. I really do like it. And I'm not gonna lie, the Fluval Aqua Clear filter, it's doing a fine job filtering the actual tank. But my biggest thing that I like about it is, is that the intake valve is actually clear. You do see it against that black background, but not nearly as much. But what do you guys think about this thing? You're gonna have to let me know in the comments what you think. We're gonna be heading over to the Colony, Texas today to Aqua Studios to pick up these fish for this Nano Predator tank. Let's get out there and and see what they got. Well guys, we are back from Aqua Studios and we have these fish that are gonna be going into this tank today. Now I have a question. Did you just watch that segment there of the drone footage? Did you happen to see the predator bird in the tree? So we actually came across that while flying the drone. We made sure we kept a safe distance from this bird, but what that is is it's an osprey. And we actually have some bonded pairs, some mating pairs of osprey in this particular area that live on our lake there. Those things are crazy. They eat fish. The cool thing about them is, is they got a 30 mile an hour dive and you should watch these things they come out of these trees and just right down into the water come out with a fish amazing creature I've never seen them I knew that they had existed but I never had any clue that they were right here literally right down the street from my house nesting right there on the lake it's an amazing thing that we caught there so if you did not watch that footage could just rewind a little bit it's just right before the segment so anyway let's get inside and take a look at these fish well we just got back with our new fish for this nano predator tank like i have said before i have never kept this particular type of fish and this fish is actually going to color up quite nicely in fact i'm going to go ahead and pop up a picture right here on the screen of what this fish will look like once we get some color into it it has acclimated to its environment well here are our little fish and well i'm Unfortunately, we're not going to really be able to see them in this bag. So let's go ahead and get these guys acclimated so we can take a look at them. We're looking at these fish. Here they are. They're all kind of crunched up to the corner here. So do you know what these guys are? If you do, go ahead and comment below. I did not show my acclimation process on this particular video. However, I wanted to kind of explain it to you while you're watching these fish go into this tank. One of the things is, is you see a lot of people float bags inside of a tank, and that's great for temperature acclimation. But this type of fish actually needs a very specific type of water parameters because it is an intermediate care fish. So I also need to be able to actually acclimate them to the parameters of the water. So what I've done is in the bag, I am cup acclimating them by removing one very small cup of water from the bag and replacing it with water from the tank. And I continuously do this for about 15 to 20 minutes until I've cycled through the entire bag of water, leaving them in only the tank water. You can see right here, that we already have some that are finding their territories and they are just acclimating to their environment so we are going to keep an eye on these guys and just see how they do but we are going to add one more thing to this tank today and that is just a couple of green neurite snails something to keep this glass clean you can't see a whole lot of these guys right now but if you take a look right there we have one right under this piece of driftwood we have another Another 
one right there under the piece of driftwood. And these guys pretty much have found their spots in this tank and are very much, I wouldn't say territorial, but they do claim kind of a stake on where they're going to be in the tank. And that is pretty much what has happened here. So the other ones are literally up in the rocks and such. I mean, there's like 10 of these guys in here. So you just, you just don't see them. That's the only thing that I'm going to say that I do not like about this particular fish. I love the tank and the way the scape has come out, but I've literally, until I feed them, they don't really come out. And yeah, we're going to, uh, we're going to feed them here in just a minute. But let's talk about what these guys are. They are Battis Battis is the scientific name, also known as a common name of the chameleon fish. And the chameleon fish is named because it can change its colors very, very rapidly. This particular fish actually comes from a river system that runs through India as well as Nepal. So shout out to all my subscribers from India or Nepal. If you are, make sure you comment below and let me know. This is a very interesting little micro predator. They like to feed on small crustaceans, worms, things of that nature. However, they are known for obesity, meaning that they will overeat if they are overfed. You want to make sure that you don't feed them too much. Another thing is, is you cannot feed them blood worms just simply because they are bad for them. So in this situation, we're going to try to feed them some brine shrimp. We're going to find some live shrimp that we can put in this tank that they can feed on naturally. Smaller shrimp, I have to see if I can find those anywhere. But we're going to try to feed these guys some brine shrimp in just a moment. These fish are cave breeders, so they like very tight, confined spaces. And that is why you see them up inside the driftwood. They actually will wiggle their way between rocks. That's why I have a lot of different kind of little hides and things like that in there that they can get under. They can find shade, things like that. They do not like a lot of light and they do not like a lot of flow. So this filter is actually, I've turned it down. It will filter a 10 to 30 gallon tank. I have adjusted that down to 10 gallons to adjust the flow lower so they are happier as well as they can survive in water all the way from 15 to 25 degrees Celsius. That is all the way down to 59 degrees Fahrenheit and up to 77 degrees Fahrenheit. No heater needed for this tank. So let's go ahead and see if we can get these guys to feed. So we have a couple in this corner over here that act like they want to come out to eat. And there's one coming out from underneath that Anubius eating. You can see them moving up to the left there behind the driftwood. Super interesting fish. Why don't we just go ahead and feed the rest of this to the these guppies here. Big old pregnant female right there. So now what is left is, is let's figure out who won the piece of merchandise. Who is the person that guessed baddest baddest in the comments first? And the winner is Ramon B. So Ramon B, if you would please send me an email or a DM on Instagram, you can find both in the description below. Make sure you contact me and I will give you information on how to receive your free t-shirt. Well, keeping with the predator theme of this video, why don't we go ahead and feed some actual predators. Big river monster predators, like the ones in this pond right here. We're gonna start here looking at, oh, Goby McTwire. And Goby McTwire is a water cow goby. And if you guys don't know, I actually got this fish from Brenton or Fanatic. And the reason his name is Goby McTwire is because the original one's name was Toby McGuire. And we didn't really know what to name him, so we called him Goby McTwire. He, hey, look at him, he is just ready to eat. Standing on his tail like always. We have the knife fish and a big old Jack Dempsey. Hey, Goby McTwire. Hey, buddy. How you doing? All right. Well, let's get him some shrimp and get these guys fed. That dude is something else. Oh, Arowana Grande. I don't stick my fingers in her mouth because she will take it off. A little feather fin squeaker catfish. Got him a piece. Here's old Arowana Grande. Whoa! See what I mean? That fool will take your finger off. You missed it. Doofus. Look at the size of this pleco that's in here. This thing is like probably good 14 inches long. Well, hopefully you enjoyed watching us feed a couple of these little river monsters or predator fish that we have. Arowana Grande and Gobi McTwire. 
and you know, hopefully you enjoy this video today. I think these little baddest, baddest fish are going to be an amazing addition to the fish room. They are super cool. Like I was talking about earlier, they are sexually dimorphic, meaning that you can tell pretty quickly and easily the difference between the males and the females, and I'm pretty sure I have both. I know you can add small terracotta pots that are turned over on their sides to make kind of a cave structure. I may add some of that back behind the plants, one on each side, and see if we can get these things to breed at some point. Not really sure, but we'll see how that goes in a future video but with all that hopefully you guys went on to enjoy this video today hopefully you're enjoying the content if you have not liked this video I would greatly appreciate it you don't know how much that actually does for helping the channel grow so thank you very much for all the support guys if you haven't subscribed or you haven't followed me on Instagram make sure you do that now and hey we will see you next time